So I was watching the X Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Welcome back, everyone. Gavin Davies is our guest. His website is theparanormalchronicles.com. And if you'd like to get a copy of Haunted Horror of Haverford West uh, that was written by our guest this hour, and it's an amazing story, it's available on Amazon.com. First of all, Gavin, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us here in the XO tonight. It's been a great pleasure talking to you, and uh, thank you for sharing this truly what you know i've been doing this show now for nearly 30 years and this is one of the most horrifying if not the most horrifying haunting i've heard of um, th- thank you so much for having having me on i'm so sorry that i've had to come on with such a a dark and gloomy you know paranormal account yeah. but unfortunately you know there's a yin and a yang to everything exactly and where there's beautiful things that are paranormal is also terrifying mm-hmm. and i hope one day to come back on because i've done other cases oh definitely but but just as a thank you to you and all your audience, so all your audience all over the world, okay, I created a brand new magazine. It's called the Paranormal Chronicles magazine, okay? Mm-hmm. It's free. There's no sign-up, no subscription, no catches, okay? Go to theparanormalchronicles.com forward slash magazine or just go to theparanormalchronicles.com and on the left it's got a magazine. I've put it up as a post. There's a magazine for you there, okay? It's 125 pages. Some of the best writers in the world there's stuff on, uh, there's a, an article on the haunted horror of Halford West, if you want mm-hmm. some more information on that. There's uh, life after death, past life regression, future life regression, um, UFOs, ghosts, sure. amazing stuff just for Excellent. your listeners because you're amazing. And Thank you. if anybody wants to get in touch with me, please do. If anyone's written a book, get in touch with me. I will support you as much as I can. Thank you so much. You're amazing at what you do. Well, you're not going yet. We still have about eight and a half minutes but I, I, I let me ask you in in all the people who lived in that house that haunted house where you spent three months another couple spent what 15 months yes did they have any haunting residual once they vacated the house I'm a big believer in attachments okay mm-hmm. I, I believe that you can you can you can go into a place that has something very insidious, very sinister there. And it's like a parasite. And, for example, it will feast off me and it will attach itself to me. And then I go around your house one night, Rob, for dinner, mm-hmm. and this thing is with me. It's like, do you know what? Rob's far tastier. He's got exactly what I want. And it will drop off and it literally scuttle off into a corner and it will grow and manifest. And I personally, for a very long time was was in the clasp of huge negativity huge depression Mm -hmm. and it has an after effect now it took me about 10 years to shake off diane and they 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 the reason they left the house was because she found out she was pregnant and she was like there is no way i am raising a child in this house so they started a new life but again it changed her so drastically that she she joined the spiritual church die he kind of like he didn't become religious but he kind of just opened his eyes that there was more to this and everyone who has every couple apart from die and Anne, have broken up from living in the house 
how does how does one's religious belief work in such a in such case as this one it, the fact that you're religious or the fact that you may have religious icons around the house does that have any effect on on a haunting like this not in the slightest this thing is is oblivious and i don't want to offend mm. anybody because you know whatever religion whatever faith whatever your beliefs are those are powerful things yeah they, they help you get through life and i'm not here to say that those are useless in any right. way shape or form what i'm saying is this thing is on a different level if there's mm. a hierarchy where you've got you know spirits ghosts demons this thing is at the very 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 top of the food chain and it's not something uh, an exorcist can take care of or a psychic medium or or a deeply profound spiritual medium as such as rose it killed her she said what what she saw it was so difficult to describe in the book to articulate something we can't comprehend it'd be like trying to explain to an ant mm. how a microwave works because this thing was so out of our boundaries of of understanding that the, it, it, this thing will come and go now i asked diane i said what would you do with a house and Di said i would knock it down ground up ground grind up the rubble and throw it into the sea and Anne said, you can't do that because she says, if you knock down that house, that thing could just go off. It could sliver off and just end up somewhere else. That's how this thing, there is no way. I've looked into history. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians, they had they had something similar that they, they saw as like a, 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 a devil that would come and it would absorb you. And, you know, there's all these people all over the world and they're suffering depression, they're suffering all these mental illnesses. And it's a very dangerous thing to say, but how do we know that there isn't actually something seeping into our reality and feeding off us, causing us to be negative? Yeah. And there's nothing we can do. There's nothing. It doesn't matter if you're, you're Chuck Norris. It doesn't matter if you're the Pope. It doesn't matter. If this thing wants you, it will have you until it's done with you. When you purchased this house, did anybody warn you about the history of the house? No, the woman, the woman who lived there, mm -hmm. uh, she didn't even, she couldn't even be bothered to show us around the house. She just sat there, and then some people we knew had lived there before us, and I was very angry. And this is in the book, and I said to him, "Why didn't you say?" And she said, "Yes, yeah, haunted. It broke us up." And she said, "Her partner, he was there one night, and he said a seven foot sil like a silhouette, something on the per mm -hmm. peripheral of his eye, right. came into the living room and sat on the chair opposite him." and scared the life out of him. And he was so scared, he went out onto the street. And I was very cross because... But then, I'm going to tell you something now, right? I've put a letter through that door, anonymous letter, just saying, if there's anything going on in that house, just go. And then, Anne tells me in her account, she's done the same. And the house is continually empty. And what I've said is, if I make enough money from this book, I will buy the house... And anybody who's got a copy of the book, that is your ticket. You can go into the house. That is your key. That is your ticket. I will have that house. And whether it's you, Rob, whether it's a university parapsychology team, mm -hmm. whether it's a reader, enthusiast, a skeptic, if you want to, I'm not going to encourage it, but if you want to, you can stay in that house and find out what's going on. Have you had professional paranormal investigators in, and have they been able to document anything on camera or through EVPs? No, because the owner... Mm -hmm. has just swip, cut it off. Wow. The, own, the owner just said, no, no, I'm not bringing this thing to life. I don't want to encourage it because they can't sell the house. And I was asked by a very skeptical British radio host. He said, well, surely, you know, she mm -hmm. could sell it to a science team for like a million pound. It doesn't work like that. You know, if you say your house is haunted, people just laugh at you. Unfortunately, the paranormal isn't, you know, thankfully there's people like you been doing this for 30 years. There's people like your audience mm -hmm. who are researching, listening, absorbing this. Unfortunately, it's not deemed an acceptable subject. And this woman doesn't want the house to have the label of it being haunted. But look what happened uh, in Amityville with that house. You know, and, and other houses and other locations that are well known and documented by paranormal teams. This would be a great case study for science. And by her not allowing this to happen, uh, that doesn't seem like it's a very good deal, especially if scientists and parapsychologists went into the house and they could actually prove the existence. Exactly. Yeah. 
if I could make enough money mm-hmm. to buy the house, I would. It would be an open zone. If you've got a copy of the book, right. I don't care if you're in Canada, America, China. It doesn't matter. If you've got a copy of the book, when you, you would be able to stay at the house mm-hmm. and investigate it, because that's the only way that we're going to give substance and credibility to what you do, what I do, to all your guests do, all your listeners, by actually having a fair investigation. Because I know, and I will take a lie detector test, I know whatever happened in that house to me in 2002, for those three months, whatever happened, I believe it to be real. And it had a profoundly negative effect on me for 10 years. And I'm blessed that I'm here right now being able to talk about it, Mm -hmm. because who knows what amount of suffering has happened to other people who I haven't been able to find, other people who lived in the house before 1989, and the people who lived there originally, what happened to them? Because there was something very dark, very horrible in that house. But it's not just that house. That could explain a lot of the negativity and a lot of the reasons why couples break up, why all of a sudden things start going wrong in their lives. If it can happen in one place, it can happen everywhere. Exactly. And people talk about, well, you know, if it's a new build, you know, if it's not, if it's an old Mm -hmm. house... Uh, you know, if it's a new house, then obviously it's not going to be haunted. Right. No, no, no. What you've got to remember is if you're in proximity to this thing, it will latch onto you. It will start feeding. It's a parasite. You walk around with this thing on you, feeling negative, feeling depressed, feeling anxious, feeling low self-esteem, cheating, doing drugs, all the negative aspects of life, right? You go into a new house and you build in. This thing gets bored of you and it just drops off and it goes off and it feeds on, on anything. It is a parasite. This is a dimensional being of something at a very top of the food chain. So if you've had experiences with demons, Mm -hmm. if you've had experiences with ghosts, spirits, aliens, this is the this is the top predator. This is at the very top of the food chain. And as I said, the critics have said this is the most terrifying paranormal account of the modern era. Hey Kevin, I hate to do this, but we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Exonation. If you'd like more information on Kevin Davies, visit his website at www.theparanormalchronicles.com. And to get a copy of Haunted Horror of Haverford West, www.amazon.com. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. a skeptic or a believer join me rob mcconnell as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the exxon radio tv show on xzbn and the exxon tv channel on simul tv since 1990 the exxon radio tv show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard together we'll investigate ufos aliens ghost bigfoot Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, X-Zone Radio TV. For more information on the X-Zone Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.xzoneradiotv.com or www.xzonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. 
Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by Shaman Worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and our guest this hour is Gavin Davies. Uh, his website is theparanormalchronicles.com, and he's the author of Haunted Horror of Haverford West, and it's available on Amazon.com. Does anybody have any idea why this specific house in this specific neighborhood in Wales was the target of this haunting? No, that, that's another mystery is because we can only go so far mm-hmm. into like the local history and the, the deeds of the house. Right. We can only speculate that we we believe that at the turn of the century, there was there was people li- living there, even either as squatters or uh, they were they were living there unregistered because in one of the remote viewing sessions, the woman claimed that she sort of that the windows were boarded up. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of strange activity in the house animal cruelty uh child cruelty that was never reported so we believe those people were living there illegally now this is where it's going to get really strange okay if it hasn't been strange enough for people um i've i've included in the book a 40 page explanations of a summary of explanations okay so i've looked at everything from gas to hallucinogenics mm-hmm. to psychological everything that you can conceivably think of that could have caused this right right but the psychic medium called rose said what we were looking at was something we'd never ever ever dealt with before and she said that this thing had there was like a tear in our reality and this thing had seeped through it was like a an intelligent organism like a, a virus Hmm. Uh, like a cold a mold spread in into our into our world, and that it would attach itself to us and and feed off our negativity. And she said it was from beyond hell, beyond heaven, beyond everything we knew. It was almost as if it was like a dim, a dimensional being that had torn had, had 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 entered a rift into our environment, into our world, and would feed off us. And so I did some study because obviously I I don't know if that's true or not. It it it, it can break your mind trying to mm-hmm. think about all of these things some people say it's ghosts some people say it's spirits some said it's aliens some said it's demons and that's the great thing about the, the way i present this book it's entirely up to you if you want to get in touch with me at the paranormalchronicles.com and say gav i read haunted horror of half west and guess what that's gas caused that they, it was carbon monoxide poisoning or well, somebody wants to contact me and say yeah that, that was demons but because- but wait a sec gavin it, how can it be carbon monoxide poisoning if it affected your neighbor on the other side of your house exactly if if, oh. if people have got rational explanations i have presented all of them but mm-hmm. some of the explanations can explain some of it but not all of it if that makes sense it does and the neighbors had we had the children and the old lady in our house okay mm-hmm. which was scary enough but they had something called the angry man okay and he was a seven foot shadow figure that you could see from the peripheral and he had very poltergeist like activities in that he his behavior would be 
he would mess the house up. He would break things. He would like if you made the bed, he'd unmake the bread uh, uh, and make the bed mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Now, Dai, who saw he actually saw the angry man in 1989, and in one of the most terrifying chapters in the entire book, he sees the the angry man make his entrance into the house, and it was one of the most terrifying things. It gave me goosebumps writing about it. But there was another strange encounter where uh, I'll keep this very very PG for your listeners. Okay, okay please do. It, because I don't want to offend anyone. But Anne, Anne had a dream. She was back in the house at the turn of the century, as it was. And she was like, she, had, she was suffering from something like sleep paralysis, where she was lying in the bed. Mm-hmm. She was conscious that she was in this other time zone. And the old lady got came into the bedroom and stripped off and lay on top of, 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 of Anne. And she was powerless to stop. And for all intents and purposes... This woman started having intercourse with her. This right. very, very old and attractive lady. Mm-hmm. Now, Anne, in our time, in our world, she kept waking up with this awful, awful taste in her mouth. And in the UK, we call it granny spit. And I don't know if anyone remembers when you're a little kid, you had ice cream in your face, your granny or your nan or your mum would lick a handkerchief. Oh, gosh, and she'd yeah. wipe it off. Mm-hmm. And there's a horrible smell of like breath and yeah. tea and o- cigarettes. Old and lady breath. Old lady breath, yeah. granny spit. And so the husband was downstairs and he could hear like this strange noise upstairs. So while Anne was having this episode where she felt like she she was having this weird dream, her husband came up and lying on top of it was a black shadow. So it was almost as if that time and this time were layered and Anne was like a conduit. Now, Anne has got no abilities like me, like like I, like my my Mm ex-girlfriend. None of us were not psychic. I don't have any abilities. I don't proclaim to have any gifts. I can't foresee the future or sense spirit or anything like that. I'm just a guy. And all of us were just trapped in this circumstances of no one can help you. Psychic mediums couldn't help. People said about exorcisms. I don't know if there's ever been an exorcism in the house. But the house is just continually empty. And huge volumes of people have lived in this house. So I did a study about the area thinking, was this the only house in Halford West? And I had 16 houses within a one-mile radius of that house wow. having similar similar kind of experiences. But then you've got to think how many of those have been influenced by the actual book. Okay, now, the area where Haver, Haverford West is, what is the history? Uh, was it, it was at the site of ancient battles? Uh, could this haunting be caused by uh, a soldier who died there? Is the area over a, a Celtic or an old cemetery? Really good question. Now, Halford West mm-hmm. is around a 1,000 years old. Right. Uh, it's got a huge castle, sentinel in the middle. If people are into their history, mm-hmm. just go on to Google and put Haverford West, and you will love it. It's a beautiful old town, okay, an old Welsh county town. Right. One of the things that uh, we had an abundance was, was was plague victims. Mm-hmm. And Halford West actually shut itself off from the world during the plague. And all around Halford West are plague pits of where people just, they were just left for dead. The monks in the area tried to try to heal them, try to help them, try to offer them comfort. And hundreds of people, thousands of people died of plague. Now, we've also had a civil war um, where, you know, the Roundheads and, and, and the, the Royals, they, they fought. There was a big mm-hmm. battle here where a cannon actually hit our castle. It was one of the first uses of artillery which made castles redundant. So we have got a history. And also, uh, our town is on a river, and there was a lot of shipping used to come up. And with that, there was lots of brothels, there was opium, there was, you know, no doubt things like pirates and things of that nature. So our town does have a rich history of violence, disease, poverty, war, crime uh, from back in the day. We were settled. Half of the West was set, There was a huge flood in Belgium around 1,000 years ago. And the King of England gave a, the land around half of the West to the, to the refugees, to the survivors, to start a new life. Plus, of course, we had the Vikings. They're heavily prominent, prominent in our area. Mm-hmm. And a lot of our towns, a lot of our areas are named after Vikings. Plus, we had the Norman invasion oh here. And we had Roman incursions. So, so there, there's a lot of... There's a lot of of sadness there's a lot of anger there's a lot of negativity in that area could it yeah. could that area have a have a vortex or or a door into a time space continuum tear like like you were describing 
is 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 very possible because we don't know is it something that was already there mm -hmm. or something that was open now i believe you know people say well ouija boards ouija boards they're bad to me mm -hmm. a ouija board is just a piece of wood but like anything like with the law of attraction of anything like yeah. that if you put enough focus into anything wanting something yeah. you that will that you will give that thing power so if four people or five people are sat around a Ouija board all wanting a ghost or a demon, you're gonna it's gonna happen. You're gonna make it happen. Psychologically you're gonna make it happen, okay? Yeah. So I'm I'm still investigating. Haunted Horror of Hafford West is a big old account of all of like, you know, people who've lived in a the house, their words, right. their experiences, plus explanations. But it's an ongoing investigation because I need to know who was in that house at the turn of the century, but there's no record of a man and a woman and two children living there. Um, and there's no, there's a lot of animal cruelty, and I can't get any evidence to show that at that time people were complaining that pets and animals were going missing. Mm. So there's there's a lot of ambiguity. And when you read the book, you were really sucked in into this this terrifying journey. And as I said, if you are prone to being very anxious very nervous about paranormal accounts this isn't probably the book for you but if you are really into your paranormal accounts and you like the nitty gritty and to be an armchair investigator and do your own research on top of what you're presented you would probably enjoy this book it, it's 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 a haunting it's a it's a horror book it's a history book it's a mystery book wow there's so um, there's so much in that in that uh, in the scenario that you've described to us, and also one you know mm -hmm. it's it's a story about a breakup. It's a story about depression. It's a story about mental health. It's about how we are so susceptible, how fragile we are. Like I'm lucky, okay. I'm here talking to you, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking to you and all your amazing listeners. This is such a humbling moment for me. Oh. And I'm here, and, I, and, I, and I've and i survived, you know, and I, I beat dependency. I've been sober six years, and well. I use my life to try and motivate and inspire. I'm a publisher as well. If anyone out there has got a book about the paranormal and spirituality, get in touch with me. I'll try and get you published. I believe in you. All right, and stand by, my friend, because we have to do our final break. And Exonation, Gavin Davies is my guest. The Paranormal Chronicles is what he is doing. His website is theparanormalchronicles.com. And you can get a copy of his book, Haunted Horror of Haverford West, at amazon.com. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. They're here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, 
after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Explanation. Gavin Davies is our special guest. Uh, the uh, he is uh, the founder of the Paranormal Chronicles. The website is theparanormalchronicles.com, and we're talking about his uh, critically acclaimed, I must say, uh, book entitled "Haunted: Horror of ha- Haverford West." Um, okay, so when we left last left, you and your girlfriend were up on the second story uh, as in bed and something kicked in your front window upstairs in the bedroom all you had to protect yourself was your your wits your your vocabulary as well as uh, your boxer shorts and a cell phone that needed to be charged and a mug yeah that's all i had no shotguns you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm five foot six. You right. know, we were talking before the show. I'm a big fan of wrestling, mm-hmm. but I don't think that would have helped. You know, because of the intent. So um, there was all this commotion, and we we heard him go, and we we, we were just praying that uh, somebody had heard all this commotion, and they'd call the police, or they a neighbour would come, or anything. And I ventured out. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't something I was particularly keen to do. Mm-hmm. But the phone was downstairs, and we a, a little bit of time had gone. Uh, that we'd hoped that they'd gone, they'd taken what they needed. We didn't have much. We just bought a house. We weren't we weren't particularly wealthy because all our money had gone into the house and the furniture we needed. Sure. So it was the most terrifying couple of seconds going down the stairs, expecting to see the living rooms all being smashed in and mm-hmm. and and whatnot. And I got to the bottom of the stairs on the light, and the living room was intact, the window was intact, the doors were all locked from the inside, the windows hadn't been broken, they were wow. locked. There, there, nothing had happened in the house apart from, uh, really strangely, all our CDs had been put into a spiral on the carpet, and a picture of me and my girlfriend had been put by the door, and that's all that there was. There was no sign of anything, and my then girlfriend, she just c- collapsed in a heap, and she took it as a sign that whatever was in that house mm-hmm. wanted us gone, and within a few, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's a very my my style is if, if you're used to anybody out there who's, re, who's used to reading books where it's like a narrative like a story um you're going to find it very very diff- different with mine what i do is i present you the interviews from the people so you get their thoughts their feelings it's very three-dimensional what were they dreaming what were they thinking what were their motives you know how did how was this affecting them i don't over sensationalize everything i give you as much detail so you the reader uh, whether you're a believer whether you're a skeptic can dissect all the information and make up your own mind and in haunted horror of haverford west i actually present a 40 page summary of explanations and we we were mortified and within three months you know uh, a fire had, had broken out an impossible fire had been caused uh, when i left the house because my then partner she had an affair everything oh had gone so wrong everything had gone so wrong that she was like she had an affair and she was the one who really did not want this to be real. She wasn't a spiritual kind of person. She wasn't into the paranormal. She didn't like horror films. Mm-hmm. She was just a very rational, black and white kind of girl. And she rang, so me and her I went, went speaking, and she rang me up one night, and she was terrified because she said something had pulled her out of the bed. So I kind of went into a spiraling abyss for the next, you know, 10 years or so. And um, I, I had severe mental health issues, including depression, suicidal tendencies, uh, alcoholism. And I pulled myself out of that. And part of my catharsism was I wrote a little book, mm-hmm. self-published and dyslexic, called A Most Haunted House, put it on Kindle, just as part of my catharsism, just to try and understand what happened. Right. And it sold 60,000 copies. And before I knew it, the Paranormal Chronicles was created. I had a network of friends. I was on radio shows. 
And the more I talked about it and the more people I connected with, the stronger I felt, the, the more protected I felt. And then people from all walks of life, from all over the world were coming towards me saying, hey, you're not mad. You know, these things are yeah. out there. Some people were giving me rational explanations. Some people give me spiritual. And I felt very safe, very safe within my little bubble. And then in 2015, I had appeared on Coast to Coast and the British media, the local newspapers, uh, the, the national newspapers and TV had really picked up on, on the story. because so I published a book as well called Ghost Sex and Violation, which was an investigation into a lady who claimed to be uh, having uh, sexual relations with a, with a ghost and a right. demon. And lo and behold, I get an email from a woman saying, because the house had to remain secret because right. it wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. She identified the house, showed me the deeds that she'd lived in the same house I had from 1989 to 91. And their story made mine look like a trip to Disneyland. If I had had experienced what they had experienced, yeah. I would not be here speaking to you now. And that's the real terror. So Haunted Horror of Hafford West is my account but the main body is their account, the three years they lived in the house. And it, it goes beyond anything. And this isn't me just trying to sell a book because I, I'm just warning people, if you if you are eat prone to being scared and, and, and you know, like you, you suffer from nightmares and anxiety from horror, don't read my book, you know, uh, because it, it is so strange, so terrifying, so surreal. I'm very confident there isn't anything out there as intense in terms of a haunting as this and these are real ordinary people they they don't want money yeah. they don't want to be in a, in a hollywood film they mm -hmm. don't want to be uh on this radio show they just needed to talk to someone about what they experienced because it, it affected them for over 20 25 years so and so let me let me just understand this so they lived in that house for three years Yes. And they were victimized by whatever it is, a demon, a ghost, a spirit. They were demonized. Let's use that word. Yep. They sold the house to you? No, this is another strange thing, okay? I've actually, uh, I made a mistake. They actually lived in the house for 15 months. It oh, was I from see, 19, okay. it was my, That was my bad. No, I no, said no, three problem, years. no problem. This is where it gets really strange now, okay? Mm -hmm. Seven people own the house from 1989 to 2002 and the house is empty to this day people come and go they wow. rent it they sell it they rent it they sell it and it's constantly empty and i've since found other people who lived there and the, the house has got a very bad habit or good habit depends what you where you want to look at it of causing a rift a massive wedge in in relationships and it will focus on the negative aspects so if you're prone to uh, adultery, mm -hmm. uh, gambling. Uh, if you've got an addiction like I did, which was alcohol, it will, it will utilize that. It will thrive and and it'll get more powerful. Now we called in a, me a medium in 2002, a psychic medium. And that just made it worse. Mm -hmm. And these people in 1989, 91, they brought in a medium and it killed it. No, I mean not not as dramatic as that she dropped down dead. But yeah. when she went to deal with this thing. She said this amazing line, okay, which is like something from a Hollywood poster. She said, whatever was in the house, the, uh, God had not created it, and the devil feared it. And she said it was beyond hell. It wasn't demons. She dealt with demons. This, this, this renowned psychic had worked with the police and the church mm -hmm. and different organizations. Whatever it was she saw in that house broke her to the extent she was terrified of dying. So we've got an old woman who's in her 70s, who's dedicated her entire life to the spiritualist church. There's people out there listening now who, who understand that. And whatever this woman saw in the house broke her. It absolutely broke her to the extent she was terrified of dying. Let me she died let, not long after. Let me ask you, Gavin, when did the history of this haunting actually start? The, there's very little evidence of anyone living in the house before 1950. Um, now... The woman who lived in the house in 1989, her name mm -hmm. is Anne in the book. Diane Anne was the name of the couple. Now, Anne would have these experiences. They were dreams for better usage. They were dreams where she would almost remote view the house as it was at the turn of the century. So around 1900, kind of Victorian Britain, 1900. At that time, the house was two houses, which she could see. And we correctly identified when we were going back through the history. Now, what she could see was there was 
a very old lady, a very tall man, uh, and two children. And the the man and the woman seemed to be related, but they were involved in some kind of ancestral relationship. There was horrendous evidence of child cruelty and animal cruelty, um, which is it was absolutely horrendous to bring my interviewees back into these memories. And there seemed to be a connection with that time. Now, the man she saw in these dreams, these lucid, uh, you know, nightmares, right. these, you know, he was a very tall man. Now, the ghost, one of the, the spirits, entities that affected not only our house, but our next door neighbor's house. So this is getting bigger and bigger. So it started with me and my the people who lived in my girlfriend, our friends that affected our friends, uh, our family who came to stay. It affected people who lived in the house going back as far as 1989 that we know of. It could be a lot more. And also affected the next-door neighbors. All right, we're going to have another cliffhanger here because I've got to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. Fascinating story, my friend. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show tonight and sharing it with us here in the Exo Nation. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to get a copy of this book, it's entitled Haunted Whore of Haverford. How do you say it? Haverford? Haverford West. Haverford, Haverford West. West. Haverford You're doing West. really well. I'm trying my best. It's You're available. Doing good. Doing good. Oh, thank you, sir. It's available on Amazon.com. Gavin uh, Davies is our guest. His website is www.theparanormalchronicles.com. And Gavin and I will be back as we discuss this haunting more on the other side of this news break as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, sci-fi, and horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at SimulTV.com. Do it today. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about simultv.com. SIMULTV.com. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And good evening, one and all, and welcome to another edition of the X-Zone Radio TV Show, coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to send me an email, X-Zone at X-Zone Radio TV dot com on all social media sites, X-Zone Radio TV. And if you'd like to find out what's going on on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, we have 24-7, 365 programming schedule available for you at www.xzbn.net. And for our channel on Simul TV and their affiliates, which is Channel 21, including Comcast and iLaunch, www.simultv.com. Now, don't forget, Exxon Nation, starting February the 14th, the Exxon TV show will be on Cable 14 throughout uh, Hamilton, and that includes Hamilton, Dundas, Ancaster, Flamborough. And uh, going west into Haldeman. So there you go. You wanted local content of the X Zone radio TV show. And thanks to good people at Cable 14, you are now getting it. X Zone Nation, my guest this hour is a gentleman by the name of Gavin Davies. Now, uh, he was born around 1975 in Pembrokeshire, West Wales. He studied hauntings in the 19th century literature and has spent most of his career in advertising and sales. Uh, he, won't, uh, he won ITV's six-part TV series, Natural Born Sellers, in 2008 and was featured on the Harry Hill TV Burp Show in 2009. His passion has always been for the paranormal and he has spent years listening to local ghost stories and myths. He says he's still on the fence in the terms of his beliefs, but has witnessed many strange occurrences in his life, but prefers to travel the psychological and rational route before making any assumption. He respects the views of all on the subject, saying that no person alive has the knowledge and understanding of time, space, and the intricacies of the human mind to be sure on anything to do with the paranormal. Joining me now from... His home in West Wales is our guest this hour, Gavin Davies. And Gavin, welcome to the Exxon. Rob, thank you very much. What an awesome introduction. And can I just say, no one has said Pembrokeshire better than you, ever. Oh. Well done. Well, You've I done th- really well, because it's a hard word to say. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And Thank uh, you very much. Oh, it's my great pleasure, sir. So, so tell me, Gavin, what was it that brought you into the realm of the paranormal? I was always interested in 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 Britain during the winter mm-hmm. during Christmas we have a great tradition of telling ghost stories right. and when I when I was younger we'd sit around the, the Christmas table telling ghost stories and you know there was that mixture of excitement and fear and what ifs and the unknown and it was terribly exciting and when I was about 4 I had 
an imaginary friend that turned out not to be quite as imaginary as everyone suspected. It was actually a well-known ghost at a local mill. Mm. So there was always this history of ghosts, but nothing I could put my finger on. So by the time I was 11, I was immersed in books and 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 going down to mm. ruined old houses and right. haunted mansions and castles. And it was an adventure. And then in 2002, my adventure came to a screeching halt when I actually bought a house that absolutely destroyed me in terms of my mental and emotional state with what I perceived to be a haunting. And that's when it really, really took off for me. And, and, and I wrote a book and that kind of catapulted my career as, a, as an author as uh, you know, like doing what I do, talking about the paranormal on radio shows mm-hmm. and, and on websites and, so, and and things of that nature. But yeah, I bought a house in 2002 and that house would go on to be in my new book, Haunted Horror of Haverford West, which has been critically acclaimed as the most terrifying modern haunting wow. of the modern era. And, and that's not like friends and family. Mm-hmm. And that's not being me being like overly confident. That's from... Tr- trade reviewers people who pay to review books people within the community have said this is absolutely terrifying and that it'll be up to your listeners to decide whether it is real or something in the mind and you know as you said in the intro i'm on the fence i'm open to all ideas all, all suggestions of what it could be but to me personally you know i i ended up an alcoholic oh i ended gosh. up depressed i ended up losing my relationship i ended up losing my career mm-hmm. i lost everything from living in a house for three months. Exonation, uh, the name of his uh, book that we're talking about is Haunted Horror of Harborford West. It's available on Amazon.com. And without spoiling it, because we want people to go to Amazon and buy your book, um, can you tell us a, a few of the instances that drove you to drink, uh, drove you to lose, uh, you know, basically unsettle your entire world in three months? Yeah, it was... Basically, Haunted Horror of Hafford West is one of the most comprehensive documentations of a haunting you're going to have, okay? Mm-hmm. It's done in witness interview style. And it begins with me yes. in terms of my experience here in 2002 and the people then who were also there. And then um, some people contacted me in 1980, uh, who, who'd lived there in 1989 to 1991. So we get their experience. But for me personally... Uh, little things all hauntings always start off with the most mundane things ever the first night we stayed there uh our alarms went off at seven Mm -hmm. in the morning me and my then girlfriend and the door just opened thick carpet it's a stable door big metal hinges and the door just swung open and we laughed you know it's like oh one night and the ghost has had enough of us (laughs) and you know and that's how it is sure doc documents going missing you know letters from the solicitors things to do with the mortgage and the first thing you start to do is blame each other because you know if rob you woke up this morning and you couldn't find your car keys you're gonna you're gonna say to your partner your family where have you put them you're not gonna go oh the ghost has moved them yeah. and and it began like that and it slowly builds and then before you know it you know and some people might say that they, they might agree with this and say i've had my own experience or some people might think it's rubbish it's hokum but it's almost as if this entity if we call it an entity for a better word mm-hmm. starts to drive a wedge between the people who are living in the house it feeds off that negativity so little things so like you're tired things are going missing you're having arguments you're having rows and then you get all the traditional trappings of a haunting right? all the stuff everyone's heard experience and they're not that interesting cold spots things walking around the house things being moved but then it started to intensify it was like the more negative we became in the house the stronger it got yeah the more destructive this thing got this entity got so like for example we would be we had a an attic conversion above the living room and it was all wooden and you would literally hear someone walking across the floor above us. You could like just imagine it walking above you. And you'd hear the door open, creak and slam. And at night then you'd hear things walking around the house. And to begin with, it was kind of an adventure. You know, let's take some pictures. Mm-hmm. You know, this is 2002. We didn't have the technology we have now, but it right. was still pretty good. You know, the digital technology. And then there was one night in particular which terrified me and to this day you know nearly you know 18 19 years removed it still terrifies me uh, me and my girlfriend were in bed 
and this is all documented in great detail in the book and we heard the window to the front of our house get kicked in like smashed mm. and where i live in this little town of haverford west in west wales it's not new york it's not a big city it's not renowned for crime and break-ins and burglaries and home invasions it's just a small town and we heard our window get kicked in and we heard very, very heavy footfalls at steps, things being opened, slammed, doors, mm. cupboards, things being smashed. And if anyone out there has ever had that kind of experience of a home invasion, you know, it's the most terrifying thing ever. And here in the UK, we don't have guns, you know, we're not armed to the teeth or anything like that. You know, all I had was... Uh, harsh language, my boxer shorts and a mug that I had by the side of the bed. And our cell phone our cell phone hadn't charged and our main phone line was downstairs. So all of this happened incredibly quickly and we heard very heavy footsteps run upstairs and push the door. And I pushed back on the door and all I could think to do was to put my girlfriend through the skylight above us, uh, the little window in the roof, to get her on the roof because we'd read accounts in London and the big cities of people being raped and murdered and tortured for PIN numbers and bank account details. And that's the first thing that goes through your mind. Mm -hmm. So we heard the steps run downstairs. There was silence. And it, all of this happened so quick. It, it's not like a film where it goes on for 20 minutes. Sure. It happens like in 10, 20 seconds. Listen, uh, Gavin, I hate to do this, but we've got to take our first commercial break. Please stand by. What a cliffhanger. By. What a great cliffhanger. Yep. You just have to know where to, where to throw that in. Exonation, <laughs> our guest this hour is Gavin Davies, and uh, he is uh, the gentleman behind the Paranormal Chronicles. His website is theparanormalchronicles.com. And if you'd like to get a copy of Haunted Horror of ha uh, Haverford West, it's available on Amazon.com, and uh, Gavin and I will be back as we continue this fascinating story right here from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzulli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. 
Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.